What's up, everybody? And we're taking a look at, um, well, technically, I've already taken a look at this figure before. Um, but that was the official Hasbro Studio Series uh, Optimus Prime. This is the Byway version. And if you don't know what that means, uh, well, it's this third-party company that uh, basically takes the original Studio Series figures, either adds something extra to it, more uh, detail or sculpt work, or upscales it slightly, or and basically just gives it a better paint job and all this and that, basically making the Studio Series figure better. And that's where this figure comes in. So we're just going to quickly go over the details on this because I have taken a look at this mold for this figure before. Uh, but since it is a third party kind of byway version, there are going to be some differences. So I will do kind of do a little compare with it. Um, so first, just going off, you know, it's basically the same figure. It's the same as the one I've already taken a look at, but there are paint differences as in like the shade of the red here. Uh, for the top part of his body with the plastic, uh, which is very different compared to the uh, original one. And of course, they do have, you know, extra paint jobs done to this one, which I will, you know, go more in detail with. Uh, and of course, you know, got very, very nice silver here for his uh, leg sections. And you got very nice uh, gunmetal coloring all around here. And, uh, yeah, there's just a lot different with this, especially with, you know, the feet being, uh, you know, that gunmetal and with the metallic blue there. And, you know, I'm not going to do like a uh, full on, you know, Transformers like type of a uh, review for this because, you know, it is a figure I've looked at before. And if you would like to take a look at, uh, you know, this mold for this figure, you can go check out that video I have already technically put out. Uh, but I will go over some of the new things here. Like this piece right here is diecast metal. That is a diecast metal right there, which is very nice to have on a figure of this scale. But yeah, there is some very nice, you know, paint detailing. These parts here are uh, on the original uh, Sue Series figure. They were stuck like this, but since these are different kind of uh, smokestacks, they have articulation, so you can move them back in a more accurate configuration and of course with the head here i'm not a huge fan of this head gotta be honest just not really big on uh this sculpted head i don't know they uh it's like a different sculpted head uh i like the coloring but not too big on the sculpt itself and of course another cool little detail here is they actually have a matrix of leadership uh sculpted and painted in there which is pretty cool uh, cause I was not on the original, but of course, you know, there's no Autobot logos because it is a third party figure, but that, I mean, that is pretty much it <laughs> for the, um, uh, kind of the details on him. Now I think what I'm doing is I'm going to bring in the original and compare the two. So pretty much here's where things get, you know, quite different. Um, now it might be a slight un like unfair comparison, uh, with these two because well, obviously I have one painted up. Um, but I will try to, uh, kind of explain a lot of the differences, uh, that, you know, were on the original that I didn't have painted up, uh, for one, uh, definitely the, uh, the, the different blues here for the legs, uh, and of course, you know, the, the wheels look a little bit on the different side too, like the wheels on the original are gunmetal while the, uh, byway ones are silver, uh, and of course, uh, there are, some other differences too, such as the, uh, kind of, I don't know, like the, uh, the different like plastics used too as well. And as, as you can tell, uh, with the, uh, kind of torso bit here, well, actually no, not torso, the waist bit here, it's actually like in a uh, blue plastic, but paint over while this one is, you know, all straight up gray. And of course the, the uh, smoked out windows here on the original are not as smoked out as the byway one. The byway one, you can almost not really see anything behind them. They almost just look like a flat black, but they definitely are smoked out. It's just not as uh, clear as the uh, original one is. Uh, but I do, although I do really do like the uh, original smoked out ones. The byway one isn't too bad. Obviously, differences with the head sculpt and the paintwork done to it. The uh, new one, the uh, byway one, is more metallic, while the uh, old 
kind of like, you know, the uh, official one is just a straight up blue. And of course, you know, missing Autobot logos on the Byway one. Uh, and of course, the uh, smokestacks here. But the smokestacks uh, for my official one, I have an upgrade kit on. So, I mean, they, the smokestacks look almost the same uh, between the two. Uh, except for the fact that um, definitely with mine, I did a little bit of uh, differences with... Uh, especially with the uh, upgrade kit here for this one. They have a tab, but the Byway one doesn't. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there is there is a pretty significant amount of differences between the two. Not too much. Uh, definitely with these top pieces here, the Byway one uh, has them in red, while, I, while the official one were just in a light gray, but I did paint mine up. Uh, and as you can see right there, uh, the, those portions that are on the arms, I had to paint up right there, uh, while on the byway one, they're, uh, already pre-painted in, like, a gunmetal there, so I really don't have to do too much painting, uh, and of course, you know, for these bits here, they were also in just, like, a flat, gray, disgusting plastic, uh, and with that middle torso piece there, too, as well, while byway has it in all of this very nice gunmetal, and, uh, yeah, just kind of looking here, mainly at the legs, uh, the knees of the Byway one have that red circle painted, and of course the bottom of the feet too. The original one had that flat, just blue and hollow, while Byway actually filled it in and has it in gunmetal gray, which actually looks really nice. I'm kind of surprised that they did that. Uh, but, you know, turning it to the side here, of course the um, arms here on the original, those were just like flat gray, uh, but Byway has them in gunmetal. Uh, and, of course, you know, on the top of the shoulder bit there, uh, I have mine in chrome, but it was a flat gray, of course, while Byway has it in silver. And the back here, I had to paint that up in silver, while Byway already has it in gunmetal. Um, and, of course, you know, the hinges and stuff, too. Uh, on the original one, the hinges were just blue, uh, which kind of looks very unsightly. Uh, and everything back here on uh, the official was just light gray, but... I painted, painted up, of course, but Byway has it already covered with a better color. Uh, same thing with the thighs there. Uh, and, of course, uh, on the inside here, you do have a uh, kind of die-cast metal skirt piece while the official one was light gray. Uh, and on the inside of the leg here, they already have the uh, gold part painted. And it's was is diecast on the inside while mine, you know, obviously, again, I'm gonna say it again, was just light gray, but I painted it up. Uh, just kind of show you the insides of the legs there, too, that there are a lot of paint differences between the two. And as you can see with this back piece too as well, uh, they already have that painted up pretty nicely. So by the way, I mean they painted uh, their Optimus Prime up pretty that's just a lot better actually than the official one uh there are you know with some slight differences but between the two the byway one just looks a lot better and i just really do like the you know more attention to uh what the colors should be rather than what they could be and yeah the byway one is definitely the one to go for um if you're looking to get the original one you know good luck they are, you know, re-releasing, of course, but if I were you, I would go with the Byway one. It just looks a lot better. It's cheaper, and the colors are definitely just a lot nicer, in my opinion. Um, and there's just some ideas that they did with the Byway one that just look a lot better. So let's go more into detail. So if you already had the original or you've already messed with this mold before, the articulation is going to be pretty much about the same, uh, although they do have slightly different joints. Such as, you know, there are some, like, joints that are uh, kind of more ratcheted or uh, a lot more uh, smoother. He is pretty uh, lightweight. Uh, you know, of course, you know, he is technically a knockoff. Uh, but as far as his articulation does go, his arms, you know, obviously, you know, do go all the way around and have that same kind of wacky hinge. Head is just on a ball joint that pretty much, you know, goes pretty much all the way around uh you know it does what you need to do it's just on a ball joint there just like how the original one was uh although slightly maybe a little bit looser uh the arms definitely are a little bit on the smoother side 
uh, there is uh, wrist rotation, of course. Um, and uh, with the uh, skirts here, uh, I'm just going to mention a couple things. There is a slight uh, bit of stiffness with these legs, so they are pretty stiff. Uh, there is some uh, um, thigh articulation. It does have these kind of slightly ratcheted uh, knees, which are pretty nice. Uh, so they do, you know, move around. He has pretty much the same articulation and everything. So there's really nothing uh, too different with him. Uh, so I'm not really going to go too far into it. Because um, like I said, this isn't going to be really a full review. It's more so just kind of like a, a slight kind of small review. Uh, but with, uh, you know, mainly just comparing the two. Uh, and of course, you know, the main difference here being uh, this chest area. Of course, you know, Byway does have the um, matrix of leadership there, so that's just something they decided to add in, which I do appreciate the attention to the detail there, which is pretty nice. Doesn't look too, too bad. Um, eh, he didn't have, it's just, you know, he didn't have a matrix in the movie, but it's nice that they just have it there, just to have it there. Uh, but that, you know, that is the one major kind of difference with the two sculpt wise um but yeah of course you know the head can't look up that far or you know down that far at all just because that ball joint uh does go all the way around and side to side and two as well and of course you know the arms are very smooth so they can go around quite well uh but he does have a bicep swivel there and of course the double jointed kind of elbow uh, just so I can just kind of show a little bit more of the articulation uh, right there. And, of course, you know, you do have, like, the same kind of, like, waist swivel going on with the also kind of, like, fake ab crunch, mainly due to transformation. And then uh, just getting that back on there. Uh, and, of course, you know, the same leg articulation. You can kick out pretty far. Can't go back at all. Uh, he does have the, you know, of course, the thigh swivel, the ratchet knees, and the foot uh, can, you know, go up and down. Not not so much, uh, but he does have pretty decent ankle pivot. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he's he's just as articulated as the original. So if you do get this one, it's basically just going to feel almost exactly like the original. Uh, maybe, you know, just a little bit lighter and uh, slightly more sturdy joints. But the main selling point for this is the accessories themselves because he comes with quite a bit and just getting into uh the accessories here he has pretty much everything you want this Optimus prime to have now this piece right here uh just starting off with this is actually a uh piece you put onto his back if you do have the trailer from the studio series uh dark of the moon optimus prime uh and you wanted to use that kind of jet wing pack on him uh you basically can with with this piece so this piece has no other significance other than that. Uh, I probably won't use it, but uh, you can if you want to. Uh, he does come with uh, this kind of slightly parts for me piece, just if you want to make the uh, kind of truck bed a little bit cleaner, uh, which we will get to. Uh, that This uh, figure does something that the original one failed to do, uh, but this is just a piece you can add on in case you just want to make it just a slightly bit better. Um, but yeah, I mean, it does look pretty nice. It's nicely sculpted. Uh, the color is great. Has a uh, very nice detailing that looks pretty good, uh, you know, as a truck bed and everything. Uh, but yeah, it is a pretty nice, uh, little piece and it is something that you can use if you would like to, but, uh, when we take a look at the figure, you don't exactly have to, but it's nice that they added something like that. And then the next thing, of course, that he gets is this hologram piece of Earth. Now, this was mainly used in the Bumblebee movie when he pulled up the hologram of Earth. Uh, but they gave it here with this figure if he wanted to use it. Um, I think they probably should have gone more with the hologram of the Transwarp key. I feel like that would have matched this, uh, you know, specific version of Optimus Prime a little bit better. Uh, because that was actually a hologram that was used in the movie. But, I mean, this one isn't too bad either. I mean, there's really, um, I mean, you could use either or. It's just, I wish that maybe they could have, you know, maybe include that one too. 
uh, for, you know, a scene-specific thing. Uh, and then, of course, you get these two cannons. Now, these two cannons are a major upgrade to uh, what the original Studio Series cannon was. That thing was laughable, it was small, and it was bad. But now you get these, which are definitely a lot better and a lot nicer than uh, what the original one was. And uh, you, as you can see in front of me, you don't get the original looking cannon because you have these ones. Because why would you need the original one? Uh, but yeah, so you get these two really nice cannons, and uh, sorry, I kind of knocked down the Noah. Uh, you also get these two swords, which are, I think, bigger than the one that came with the um, or original one. Uh, but also in this case, you get two of them, uh, which are painted up very nicely. The main color plastic is the gunmetal, but it is also painted silver, and the edge of the blade is painted in this nice orange. Uh, so you do get uh, two of those. And then, of course, you do get Prime's Axe, which on camera, it's coming up as like this weird, like goldish kind of silver. It's like washed out gold. Uh, but it is supposed to be like a silver. I don't know why it's coming up. I was gold. Uh, but it is a lot bigger and a lot nicer looking than the actual uh, one that came with Optimus Primal which I will also, you know, show that off too as well. Uh, but this is mainly in a gunmetal uh, plastic, but it is, you know, the blade is painted. And it does look pretty nice. It's sculpted out pretty nice, and it does look pretty, pretty cool. Uh, slightly sharp, but not too sharp at that little point up there. And then, of course, the last and final thing that you do get is probably one of the surprisingly one of the more interesting and most important accessories that I'm kind of surprised they uh, put it with this. But you do get a Noah figure, uh, which I will go into more detail with, but you do get accessories for him too as well. Uh, but yeah, so let's take a look at how the accessories fit. So just going over one of the uh, first accessories just to kind of get it out of the way um, is just this kind of back piece used to integrate the trailer if you do have the uh dark of the moon uh optimus prime trailer you just take the pegs and just kind of peg it on the back here and it just kind of just pegs on that's pretty much it just pegs on and if you do have the trailer you can integrate it uh but i don't uh and i probably never will uh but yeah that's pretty much just how you kind of use that uh piece um we're gonna give that piece away to my friend <laughs> uh but yeah, then, uh, of course, you know, with these cannons, uh, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory for the most part. Uh, you have a whole section there. Uh, so, basically, what you're going to do, do is, like the original, you're just going to open up this flap right here. And then, uh, just spin the hand on in. Just kind of swivel the hand in there, like so. Just kind of make sure you get it in all the way, like that close the flat piece up and there'll be a hole section right there and a peg section on the outside of that hole that will uh just peg on in to that portion right there and it will just peg in very nicely and there you do have the cannon on him and of course you know the other cannon works for the other arm too in the same way but as you can see it definitely looks like a lot nicer of a cannon rather than that of the uh one that was uh originally with the figure so it definitely looks a hell of a lot better uh definitely a lot bigger too and it just conforms to the arm just a lot nicer and it you know doesn't look like a little baby pea shooter now that we've pretty much taken a look at the cannon now we're just going to peg it off it comes off pretty uh easily and then uh we'll move on to some of the other accessories so just kind of opening the flap there, spinning the hand back out, because we will need the hand for the rest of the accessories. Uh, so then what we'll do is we will bring in the swords. So bringing in the uh, the sword here, we're just, we'll just do one of every each accessory, just because you don't need to put both on if you already know how to put one of them on. Uh, so there are, you know, multiple pegs here on the sides. Uh, you can have him holding them in, in different ways. Uh, but the main way is to take this peg here, 
at the end of the handle and just kind of peg it on into that little hole right there and there you go he has his sword already all pegged in and it looks quite nicely uh there are other ways that you can peg the sword in too you can have them just straight up uh hold the sword like this if you wanted um you can do that if you want or you know taking it out here uh it is a bit of a tight fit uh you can actually have it peg on the back too as well with these other ports and such so they have this uh kind of smaller peg which pegs into this uh, bottom set of pegs there or you have the uh, bigger peg which also pegs into the uh slightly bigger hole set on the back so it does have storage options for it and uh yeah so i mean that's pretty much it for the uh sword accessory now just kind of show the uh, hologram globe here uh, you just kind of move the arm up, and there is uh, actually a uh, kind of peg section on top of the forearm here, which will just peg on in like so. And there you go. He has his uh, kind of hologram up there looking all pretty nice, and it doesn't look too bad at all. Now, taking a look at the Noah little kind of minifigure, his detailing is pretty, pretty nice. Uh, you did have to kind of put him together yourself. He was on, like, a sprue kit kind of thing. Um, he looks a little skinny in some areas. But, I mean, it is a pretty nice little thing to have. And uh, I do wish, though, uh, that they uh, kind of maybe made it a little easier to put him together. Maybe some instructions would have been nice. But for the most part, he is self-explanatory. It just would have been nice to have the instructions. Um, but, yeah, he's detailed very, very nice super small um i mean he is uh pretty much i think the same size as the human alliance figures were back in the day maybe a little bit smaller uh just to be more in scale uh but he has uh only one thing painted on him which is his uh his chest with those uh kind of like little kind of lights those came pre-painted and everything uh he's not a bad little thing uh he does have uh some articulation which i'll go get into uh shortly but, I mean, yeah, he's sculpted very, very nice. No face on him, uh, of course, due to uh, licensing. Uh, but his head does have uh, full rotation around. It is just on a peg. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's uh, very, very nicely done. His arms don't move outward, but they do uh, sw swivel and turn all the way around. Uh, he does have a bicep swivel right there. And, of course, a single bend at the elbow. And as far as the waist goes, he does have waist rotation right about there. And his legs uh, split out about that far, which is pretty good considering how small it is. And, of course, they do uh, kick forward about that far, which is pretty decently far. They kick back pretty much almost all the way. He does have a single bend at the knee, which goes pretty deep. And he does have a ball jointed foot that goes down about that far uh, and has a very slight pivot, almost non-existent pivot. But yeah, he's pretty decently articulated and uh, sculpted for a little thing. He did come on a sprue kit. I just kind of wish that they uh, maybe would have made it a little bit easier for him to uh, you know, be put together, but he is pretty nice. So for Noah's accessories, uh, he does come with this other head. Now, at first, I thought it was a replacement head in case you lose one. Uh, but then I kind of realized that there was actually a peg in hole in the back uh, where to actually, when you do peg it on, uh, it actually has his head at an angle. So you can kind of technically angle the head a little bit differently. Uh, so he does have that kind of head there, but just kind of putting the normal head back on. Uh yeah, I mean, that was pre that's pretty cool to uh, add to the figure in case you wanted, like, a different angle for his head. But, uh, of course, he also comes with other accessories, like uh, these two. Uh, I think that's a... Is that a hair? Oh, <laughs> there was a hair on it. My bad. But he does come with uh, other accessories here as these uh, uh, kind of hand arm cannon uh, accessories right here, which I will show how to put on as well. So... Um, he does also have these, uh, kind of like, uh, arm blade accessories too as well. 
So he does come with these, which are a little bit pokey. Not too, too pokey, though, so I would still be careful. Definitely wouldn't want to stab yourself with them, but he does come with those. And, of course, just to put them on, here you just take the arm off the peg right there, like so. And then you just bring in one of those uh, arm pieces, and you just peg it on. So here is the uh, one of the blade uh, pieces right there. So that's how he has the uh, kind of blade arm on, which is pretty cool. And then uh, just kind of showing off the other arm, I'll just take this off like so. And then we'll just peg on this other arm here, which will be the cannon. So we'll just peg the cannon arm on, and it just pegs right on there. And there you go. Now you have a cannon arm, too, along with them. So it's pretty cool, and also, you know, both arms can, you know, go the opposite way if you want to do that. Wouldn't recommend it. It's not exactly atomically correct, uh, but it does look nice on him. So you can have him with the cannon arm and the blade arm. Only wish the arms had more articulation. Now, just kind of, you know, showing what he came on here, uh, you know, uh, no homo, but uh, he came on these sprue kits, and uh, you just kind of, you know, take them off, but uh, unfortunately, nowhere in the instructions at all does it ever uh, show the uh, assembly process for Noah, and I'm just kind of showing off the instructions here right now. There's nothing about noah at all and this is the only instruction booklet you get with the figure uh which you know it would have been nice if they maybe showed how to put the noah figure together just in case that there were people who didn't know how to put it together or you know people who uh basically are new to the model kit shit but i mean it would have been nice now i'm just gonna kind of you know compare uh some of the uh weapons to some of their originals uh, just to kind of show you how uh, different this uh, figure is compared to what we already had. So here's the original uh, blade, which I did, you know, paint up a little bit. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the new one is definitely a little bit uh, bigger by uh, a slight little bit. Definitely a lot, you know, pointier, looks more sword-like rather than kind of maybe like a paddle. Um, and it is pretty much almost the same sculpt, if not a little bit more crisp and a little bit more better uh and as you can tell the uh, original one just was not as good uh, the original one still has the gunmetal color but it is mainly in a blue plastic and you can tell by the peg right there uh and of course the edging uh yeah i said edging uh but yeah you could tell the sword from this one's better uh, but of course the axe too as well uh on my uh, right here, this is the axe from the primal version. And, of course, on the uh, left is the byway one. But, uh, as you can see, the, for the primal axe here, um, it's a little bit interesting. Uh, you know, just a flat gray plastic. While the new one has this very nice, almost goldish-looking silver to it. Uh, I don't know why it's coming out that way on camera. Uh, but, yeah, as you can see, the uh, the new axe is a lot better. And obviously, a little more accurate to the movie and of course just showing how the axe goes in because i did kind of forget to show that uh you just kind of put it in the hand like so and that's pretty much it you just slide it in his hand with the peg there and that's pretty much how he holds the axe so it looks quite nice and pretty good but uh yeah the uh the axe from this set is definitely a lot better a lot lot better than the axe from the primal one and just to kind of show the primal one here the primal one just kind of feeds in there onto that peg too as well but i don't know so you can't have them have two axes if you do have the two uh but i will be getting rid of mine but yeah i mean it doesn't look too too bad and of course you know showing off uh how good the cannon is compared to the original one here's the cannon you get with the byway one definitely looks a lot better than this uh, official one yeah there's no competition here at all clearly the byway one is a lot better than uh this uh ridiculous little piece of light gray plastic um yeah i'll definitely be using this uh byway cannon a lot more than this original one this original one is a joke and just kind of showing off you can actually use the official uh accessory pieces with this figure if you would like to um you know you don't have to uh i certainly am not but just kind of showing that you can interchange the weapons 
But I'm not gonna lie, I did forget an accessory, my bad. You can go ahead and call me a bad reviewer, sometimes I make mistakes when I film my videos. But anyway, the <laughs> accessory I did kind of forget about was actually his gun. Yeah, he comes with a gun. Um, which was not used in Rise of the Beast, but was in the Bumblebee movie. Uh, now, did he have to come with this? No, I don't think he did. But he did anyway, so you have another option for it. And uh, to be fair, I did lose the gun while I was filming, and I just found it. And realized that I forgot to mention it. Uh, but yeah, here is the gun. It is sculpted you know, pretty nicely, and I will compare it next to the uh, gun from the uh, Bumblebee movie, uh, Optimus Prime figure. The Studio Series, I believe it was 35, was it? So here is the Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime gun. Uh, and this one came custom painted uh, when I bought it off eBay from a guy. Uh, but you can tell they share some very similar, uh, you know, sculpt work uh, with each other. So, I mean, there are some very strikingly similar areas of sculpt with both these guns. They almost look the same, but they are slightly different. The new one is definitely uh, more flatter rather than a little bit more on the 3D side. Uh, but it is actually quite nice and it looks a little bit bigger. So showing how to basically put uh, the gun into Prime's hand. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just take the gun and place it in like how a gun would be. And that's pretty much it for the, uh, well, the gun. Uh, not going to really go on it too much. Now, taking a look at some small kind of, you know, comparisons, not doing a lot of comparisons right now. Mainly just going to show you, um, you know, the size of him compared to the original. So here he is next to the original one. And of course, you know, it's pretty much one to one. It's going to be the same scale. So there's going to be nothing to worry about if you're afraid of that. It's going to be, you know, maybe bigger or smaller than the original one. They are the pretty much same size. So you'll be okay in that regards. Um, you know, it's just not the personal preference whether you want to keep it official or go with a third-party figure that, in my honest opinion, is better. But uh, anyway, taking him aside, obviously, you know, bringing a Bumblebee here, my, you know, obviously official Bumblebee. Uh, as you can see, they do scale pretty nice with each other, and I will bring in the official one and probably keep the official one in frame just to show you that the scale is pretty much the same so you have nothing to worry about if you're really worried about the scale uh because this figure you know scale is pretty much just about the same and of course here is scourge from uh rise of bees so yeah he's going to scale the same uh so i don't think you'll have any complaints there and of course bringing in the bumblebee movie optimus prime here uh the bumblebee optimus prime uh scales a little bit more differently uh, compared to the Rise of the Beast one, uh, but all in all, it's basically going to be about the same scale, so you will have no problems when scaling or having it on your shelf. He won't look too small. He won't look too big. He's going to be the same size. It's just a matter of personal preference whether you want the official one or you want the byway one, uh, but you know, I'll leave that up to you guys, so let's get into transformation. So being completely and totally honest with you guys, I am not going to show the full transformation because the front part of the truck is pretty much the same as the original one and i already did a video on it uh it's not me being lazy it's just me just kind of you know basically just saying that there's not a lot of difference but these uh smokestacks here you do have to turn those around um but a lot of the differences are going to be with this back section so first to start off with what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece kind of twist that down and we're going to lift out this gas tank right here. And then onto the side here, we're going to do the same. Just lift that piece down, flip open the gas tank there. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to come to the back. Basically do what was with the uh, original one. We're going to lift these pieces out. But we're going to fold out these inner leg pieces right here. And we're just going to basically unpeg the whole entire shin and lift it up almost close to the original but there are some slight differences uh mainly with those like kind of side you know square pieces not being attached and also uh having some new uh transformation joints 
to actually make the back cleaner. So with these kind of hinged parts, make sure they're hinged, uh, you know, forward like that. And then what we're going to do here is we're actually going to kind of bend these knees down just a little bit. So we're going to take this and that will notch up into there. So we'll just lift that up there. Same thing for the other side. Just lift it up and it will notch right there. Then we're going to do is going to bring the feet in. Usually this peg here on the bottom of this foot would flip out. But unfortunately mine is like stuck and I don't want to like break my nails trying to get that out. So I'm just going to leave it in. You don't even have to have it out if you want. Uh, so we're just going to fold these feet in like so. Doing the same for the other side here. Just kind of fold it in and keep it like that. Uh, usually you would peg it in, but mine's not going to come out. But we are going to peg these two pieces together using those uh, flaps. So those will just peg on in like so. And then what we're going to do is bring these sections down. So we're going to kind of bend the knees just a little bit just to give room for these to be brought down. And then these will just come down here like so. And they will peg in to those back portions or more like tab. And once you just get that tabbed on in and then we get this all situated and nice and neat there you pretty much have the truck mode all done just making sure things are cleaned up and all flush with each other making sure those gas tanks don't go in and that's pretty much the uh, truck mode and as you can tell that is a perfect truck bed but there is one more piece and it's the accessory we took a look at a lot earlier into the review so I will show you how to attach that, but first, first I just want to show you how much better of an improvement that Byway has done over the original. So of course, here's the original and here's the Byway one. Now I'm just going to go over a lot of the things that they did differently because boy, oh boy, did Byway vastly improve on this figure compared to the, um, you know, original, uh, you know, OG kind of one uh so just bring in the og one this og one uh, official one had this really messy messy back section it looked awful a lot of gray plastic just super messy back here just full of junk that just did not need to be there lots of lots of junk and of course the top here that you had sections of gray plastic one of them i already painted up just because it looked awful and yeah, just lots of gray plastic all around. It just did not look great. But of course, this back section was horrendous. But of course, Byway saw that and they decided we need to fix that. And they did. And this looks so much better. I know some people were, you know, getting the uh, DNA kit and, you know, the, all these other different kind of like prime figures. Um, well, the DNA kit didn't do shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, all I did was uh, add to the mess, which was bad. And then, of course, now you have this, which, you know, there is still the hollow gap there, but obviously that gets fixed with this other accessory it comes with, which I'll show in a second. But, I mean, as you can see, Byway made it much more cleaner, and it just looks a hell of a lot better in comparison to the official figure. The official figure looks like they didn't even try, which sucks. Because usually Hasbro does some really great things sometimes when it comes to Transformers. But this time they really just dropped the ball on it. And yeah, I mean, just just showing these two side by side, you could just tell like just which one looks a hell of a lot better. But even looking at the front here, the official is just, you know, light gray plastic that it looks gross. But Byway has it in silver, which looks definitely a lot nicer in my opinion a lot of the same detailing you know on each side you know not much you know different uh here and there but uh the main thing really is just that back section because uh and you know it's not about budget it's just about management because clearly if byway can do it hasbro could have done it and obviously the top here the byway one is in red while the official one was like this gray plastic you know it's just I don't know. Byway did such an amazing job. 
And of course, you can make the back of the trailer section a lot cleaner too because Byway added this piece where you can just tab it in like so with those tab sections and do the same for the other side too as well. Make sure it's all nice and down there and you can make it look a lot cleaner too if you want. You don't have to, but you can and it does fill that gap up just a little bit there. Could have made it a little bit longer just to fill the gap in a little bit more. Uh, but you can also use it for storage if you want to store some things on it. Uh, that is up to you. But you can do that if you would so choose. But, I mean, yeah, they, the fact that they added this as something that you can have to make it even cleaner than it already is, it's just a lot nicer. And I know there was another Optimus Prime figure that uh, fixed the trailer section, except, you know, maybe, like, in a little bit of a different kind of way. Uh, but that figure was way too big. Uh and uh, it wasn't in the scale, so I didn't get that one. But this one is, I think, does it just a lot better, and it looks a lot nicer. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I guess you can't really fit all the weapons on. Uh, but you can fit some if you want to, you know, store some if you'd like to. But it does just look really, really nice. And I really praise Byway for making such a problematic figure into a figure that's basically borderline perfect. And... Yeah, the, uh, the transformation, too, was a lot smoother compared to the original. The original one, I felt like I was going to break it a couple times or, you know, chip something or snap something off just because it was very difficult. As for the final thoughts on this figure, it's a lot better than the Studio Series, like, official, like, Optimus Prime figure. The truck mode's cleaner. It looks nicer. The accessories are a lot better. They're more accurate. The paint job is nicer. The articulation is smoother. This transformation is smoother. Everything on this figure is just better. So, I mean, if if I were anybody looking to get this version of Optimus Prime, I would get the Byway version. But, you know, obviously, you know, that's just me. But me personally, I would get this version. This version is a lot better. Uh, there's just no need for that official version, which sucks because Hasbro could have really done good with that thing and basically done what they did with this one. But, you know, they just chose not to. They chose to make something, you know, that was kind of subpar in some areas. And they basically chose to cheap out. But luckily, companies like Byway exist. So that way we can have damn near perfect figures. Now, this figure was pretty cheap. It was only like around 30 bucks too. Which, I mean, honestly, is around the same price as the Hasbro one. But it's better. Now, as far as the little Nova figure goes, uh, he doesn't like to stand. As you can see right now, I have to keep trying to uh, get him to stay up, but he just doesn't like to sometimes. Uh, the Nova figure's great. Uh, it was a great addition. It didn't have to be added to uh, this set, but it was. And I think it looks, you know, pretty great. Gets the job done for what it, you know, needs to do. Uh, but I do think some instructions on putting them together would have been nice. And maybe some uh, shoulder articulation. Uh, but I mean, he is really small, so it's really not too big of a deal, in my opinion. It's it can be looked past. Um, but yeah, it is a really great figure, uh, really great set. But that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.